Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 107 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. Today we're talking about what to do. Like, what do you do if you have intuitive gifts? And the world is calling for those, make no mistake about it. So your intuitive gifts might be really getting pretty loud, knocking at your door, waking up, getting stronger, all kinds of stuff might be happening. So we talked recently about um, the witch wound and the fear that people have, but not even just that. Like this doesn't even have to be any kind of past life thing or genetic memory thing. I, I think it is genetic memory, but it doesn't have to be. This this is as simple. Well, I, I started before I think I even said the title, but it pretty much I'll figure a title out, whatever. Um, but it's like, what do you do? So the world is moving into a state where you need those intuitive skills for yourself and your family to thrive in the world that's evolving over the next few years, right? We're tearing some shit down. The last year we're still going to tear some shit down and that's still going to happen. But it's like any change, big stuff starts falling down, falls down, and then it falls down a little slower and a little less. But as it's decreasing, the new is increasing, <clears throat> right? It's parallel. So what you might be noticing as the increasing is you're getting pretty fucking tired of denying that you have these psychic abilities, these talents. What I want you to hear is, if you're aware of that and you're struggling in that in-between space of, I know I can do these things, I do these things, my family does these things, nobody talks about it, I feel weird about it, just please know that you're absolutely not alone. Absolutely not alone. Thousands of millions of people are going through this, male and female. I just happen to have more women that email me and reach out to me and stuff. So within two hours today, two different women who don't know each other said, I want to, I need to, I have these things, but I'm scared and I'm not taking action on them because I'm scared. <clears throat> and for people who follow me closely on Facebook, I've talked about the dead thing, being able to hear from the dead and the team invisible and the blah, blah. I think I've talked about it more on the podcast, but I've talked about it way back on Periscope and things like that. Um, but what I'm noticing is, as I fully accept that, and get more comfortable with it. People see those posts more. So I made a post on Facebook the other day. And it got a lot of um, traction. And I, I, you know, but it's certainly not the first time I've said that. Uh, but it's the first time I think it had wide viewing. Which lets me know my energy has changed. So it's not exactly like... You have to believe you were a witch or you have to believe someone down the line in your genetic heritage was a witch, or an herbalist, right? A midwife. Let's call it what they really were. A woman of power and a woman with property and a woman with some of that sweet moolah that gets labeled as a witch. So all that stuff can be taken from her. So let's be clear about that. But anytime you go against something in your society anything in your society, you are going to experience this same thing. This is not unique. It might be unique in your experience. It might be very unique in your experience if you happen to be white. If you think about your history, if you ever stepped out of line in your peer group in school, if you ever were the poor kid that had the wrong clothes or couldn't participate in the activities, 
anything that you went through that made you different, that made you feel shame for being different, it's all the same, right? So it's no big mystery about how to move into claiming your intuitive gifts. Because at some point in your life, you've done it on a small scale or a large scale. If you have dated a person from a different, who's a different color, if you've dated a person who's a different religion than your family and your family cares about shit like that, if you've dated a person who's your same gender, anything, if you didn't have the right haircut. So from as simple as, You were the poor kid that didn't have the right shoes all the way to your family is a diehard religious A and you married a someone from religion B and got disowned or something dramatic. Or you married someone with a different race and had the misfortune to live in the South and possibly receive death threats or violence. Right, So we can go little bitty, we can go totally extreme. But human beings want to fit in, right? That's our, that's our ancient primal survival mechanism that only serves us when we're conscious of it. Like, you don't want to get rid of the primalness of you that makes you jerk the wheel of your car right in the right time to avoid a horrible accident. Like, you don't even know what happened until you're on the side of the road panting. You just missed an accident because your body moved your ass. Your body perceives that what's happening way faster than our little pea brains can keep up with. So, you know, we don't want to lose that stuff. We don't want to lose the part of us that cares about the community. In fact, that's part of the problem right now is we've been raised to be so independent and singular that some people are hard, finding it hard to give a shit about the community. They can't think in terms of the whole. So what a bind, right? Your soul knows, your body knows that you need to bring these skills fully online because you need to be able to hear your body say, post this now. Don't sign up for that MLM. Go with this coach. Nope, don't go with that coach. Go with this other coach. Nope, don't go with any coach. Keep turning within. You know, you don't know. Your body knows. This is why I love human design, even even though the roots of it are so wacky. Like, don't even bother reading the history because you'll just be like, what the fuck? How did that happen? But it, the thing is that it works. But it works because it pushes us toward the body. It gives our brain some candy and some diagrams and some stuff to think about. But ultimately, you're being... um, You're shifting your decision-making ability from your head to your body. The more you go into your body, guess what, honey bunnies? Uh, uh Uh-oh. Your intuition wakes up, y'all. You start listening to your body. You start paying attention to your body. All those intuitive skills that you've had so handily stuffed in the closet, they start pushing to get out. Because they're in your body. (laughs) That's the bad news. Oh, I'm going to explore my human design. And I'm going to make all my decisions from my body. And look at that. My relationships are great. And oh my God, look at my bank account. And oh, fuck. These dead people are loud. (laughs) No, you can't just pick and choose. Okay, I'm going to listen to my body, but only about business decisions. Mm Mm-mm. Nope. Not how it works. You start listening to your body, all these things start to wake up. All the reasons. All the reasons that you checked out to begin with. Hello, trauma work. All the things that you never learned. Hello, gotta read some money books. Maybe take a class. Figure out my taxes. 
Hello, D I B O R C E. <laughs> oh, my heart's opening. Oh, God, am I having a heart attack? Like it feels physical. All this shit is worth it. Like when you just list it off, you're like, well, hell, I don't think I'm going to look at that human design stuff then. I don't want these intuitive gifts. I don't want to be a witch. I don't want to be a psychic. Damn sure don't want to be a medium. You know, but oh, too late. You already started listening to your body. But here's the good news. The more you say, all right, look, I'm a grown ass woman or a man or a they. And I've been through some shit. If you're listening to this podcast on a regular basis, you've already been through some shit. You wouldn't be here otherwise. I 100% can say that with certainty. Nobody who's had a blah, 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 bland ass old vanilla life who's looking to build an online business in seven easy, linear, masculine, patriarchal steps ain't listening to this podcast. So think about it. What do you do when you have these psychic gifts and you're scared to tell people? Well, you're going to have to get over it. If you want to thrive and have an open heart and know that you can handle any energy stream that comes at you, I'm not saying get rid of your crystals. I got a bunch of them. I have an appointment tomorrow to get some more from Courtney Francis. I have a crystal appointment. (laughs) Crystals with Courtney. She's the crystal matchmaker. Right? So I don't even know what I want, but I'm going to meet with her. And also, I know it's not ultimately about the crystal, but guess what? They make me happy. When I know they're coming from an ethical source, from somebody who's responsible, it feels good to hold them. And that is a body thing, right? You want to start doing whatever makes your body feel good. If you need to wear all pink and look like a bottle of Pepto-Bismol exploded all over your ass, then that's what you do. Feeling good in the body. So I want you to think over your life. Here's what you do, right? So, what? okay, let me say one more thing and then I will get to the what to do bit. You don't have to do this. You can keep on fighting it. You can keep on being, feeling weird about it. You can keep paying money to psychics when your own psychic abilities are trying to tell you the answer already. That's okay if you need that validation. We all do that now and then. Everybody has these. Everybody has intuitive abilities. You can see it in black and white on the paper in your human design chart. There's not a person on this planet who's in a body that doesn't have intuitive abilities because your body is intuitive. Do you think that psychic ability is coming from your brain that can't figure out how to balance a checkbook? That can't find your damn keys? You think your brain has access to all that magic? No, it does not. It gets you to the grocery store and back. It helps you remember as you're halfway to the door that you forgot your fucking mask and you got to go back to the car. That's what your brain is for. Your body is holding all the magic. And all this remembered magic, it's magic, not magic, right? It's a natural skill that we've been cut off on. And I'll probably do a ranty episode about that pretty soon because I have a lot of rage about some things <laughs> the more I'm but the more the nickel drops in my system the more I'm like oh fuck what in the hell I'm mad so I'm not going to go into that now I'll save that and I'll put a warning at the front so you don't have to listen to it <laughs> if you don't want to but everybody has intuitive abilities you know who taught me really an extra layer of amplifying my intuitive ability, ability, abilities, not counting my family and my mom who had every book on the planet in our house 
about weird stuff. Not all the classes I took as a teenager. You know who really sharpened me up? Cops. That's right. That's right. The thin blue line amplified my intuition. They just called it your gut feeling. They taught us how to go up to a house feeling for our gut feeling, being aware of our gut feeling. They talked about it all the time. She didn't call it intuition or psychic abilities. Law enforcement officers know because safety is their thing, right? You got to listen to your gut. I heard that a million times. Listen to your gut. What's your gut say? If you think there's something wrong, there is. That's intuition, baby. Everybody's got it. So you can start there. Write this on a piece of paper. Every single person in the body has psychic abilities, period. Write it 10 times if you need to. Number two. The only reason I feel weird about my psychic abilities is because they're unfamiliar. Number two. Number three. When they become familiar, I won't give a fuck about what other people think. You might want to write that one ten times. Let's say it again. When I become comfortable with my psychic abilities, I will no longer give a fuck what other people think. Okay? Now, the next thing I want you to do is go make a list of every time you were the weirdo in the room and you knew it. It's got to be at least once. Make a list of every time you were the oddball at school that didn't fit in because your hair was curly and everybody else's was straight. Hello, 70s. <laughs> Go make a list of all the times you can remember that you just burned with the shamies because you were different and you felt left out. Do that and then ask yourself, am I still acting like I'm 13 <laughs> when I'm 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 90? Am I still acting like I'm in eighth grade? Is it time maybe to quit doing that? <laughs> And ask myself what I want. Maybe look at my human design chart and start there. Which gates do I have? Which centers are defined, undefined, blah, blah, blah. You can jump in the Practical Human Design for Success free group on Facebook if you want in on that. But you can see it in your chart. Oh, auditory. Oh, potential for channeling. Ow! breakthroughs and insights ow okay it's not it's not it's it, it's normal let me say it that way it is normal normal what i can't say normal in other languages how would you say normal in french shit i should have looked that up i think it's just normal right a different emphasis isn't it? it's probably spelled the same Make a list of all that shit you've already gone through. Guess what? You went through it. You're still here. You're still alive. You are still a functional member of society. You are successful enough that you are holding a smartphone in your little paw. You're successful enough that you have figured out how to play a podcast and drive a vehicle at the same time, or go for a jog, or eat snacks. You're so powerful that long, long, long ago, somebody told you to shut the fuck up because they couldn't deal with it. It's not you that feels abnormal. It's a story you got handed because you were doing something that was in the way of somebody else. Mom trying to get you out of the door and go to school. She didn't want to hear about the dead person sitting on the stairs 
waving goodbye. She didn't have time for that shit. She's probably psychic too and scared to death of it. She don't want to hear that nonsense. She got to get you to school. She doesn't care. She doesn't want to know. So she may have told you, don't be silly, ghosts aren't real. You didn't see that. That's not true. Quit making up stories. You don't have an imaginary friend. Knock that shit off or whatever. Somebody at some point told you something and you got the message. Oh, I, oh, that's a no, no. Don't do that. Okay. Other client, other people that I've had as clients saw something were so open and aware when they were little bitty that their human brain could not handle it. Okay. So somebody shut you down or you may have shut yourself down because you had to, because you were only two years old. A two-year-old brain that's developing into a human and forming the ability to narrate in its head and do all the things that you need a brain for to get through life with also doesn't have time to listen to ghosts or deal with bright lights or scary shit in the, by your bed at night. Your brain's trying to grow and be functional to form an ego that you need. You don't have time for ghosts and shit. You don't have time to remember your past lives. You can't do anything about the thoughts you pick up from your mom and dad. And they distress you. So as you shove all that shit in the closet and you slam the door. That's okay. There's nothing wrong here. It's okay that you're nervous. It's okay that you're afraid. Go look at my Forest Reiki page and that squeamy, sweaty-ass video that I've refused to let myself take down. Because that was my first public, hey, y'all, I'm a fucking weirdo, video. <laughs> I'm not going to take it down. Periodically, I still want to. I'm like, oh, I should take that sweaty video because I was in a total panic. I was in a panic when I made that video. I got the instructions, I, it clicked in my body, and I ran outside to make the video because I knew if I hesitated even 60 seconds that it would never get made. Thank you, Dana Wild. I was in Dana Wild's um, <coughs> celebrity coaching group. That's how Forrest Reiki's in the world because I had a bunch of support. I didn't do that shit by myself. I had Dana Wilde going, oh, do you want to do it? Then do it. I was like, okay, but I'm going to have to do it really fast. <laughs> right? So it's okay. Why wouldn't you feel weird? You're going against society anytime you go against society. Your personal culture, your family culture, your neighborhood. You're the only jackass that refuses to decorate for Halloween and the HOA ladies being a bitch about it. You've gone against society. People are mad at you because you're going against the rules. People are usually mad at you because you're inconveniencing them. <laughs> Do you care? You're not eight. You're not 14. I'm guessing you're probably over 18. You don't have to care about what people think about you. It doesn't matter. What matters is you thriving and growing and expressing and being authentic in the world because that is what is going to bring you money. And we still need money to survive. We still got rent to pay. Unless you've got a cow and you're milking it, you still got to give some money to the chick at the grocery store to get a jug of milk. Right? We still got to have money for now. Only the ways we used to make money aren't working. You've probably noticed that. Maybe 10 years ago you could do a little crystal grid and dance under the moonlight and make your coffee with moon water or whatever and get 100 bucks out of nowhere. But it doesn't work. It's not working. It's got to come through your body. Have all the crystals. Do all the rituals. I burn incense every morning. Offerings to my land. 
to my body, to all my Team Invisible, whatever dead people happened to be hanging out that day. Okay. I also know it's not the source of it. The source of the magic is in your body, in your bones, in your blood, in your heart, in your fingertips. It's in you. You couldn't be separate from it if you tried. No crystal on the planet is going to give you access to your magic. It can be a tool to help you. But it opens the door. It's not what's inside the closet. Just be clear. You are the magic. It is you. You are it. You can't, you can't, you cannot be separate from it. When you're separate from your body, you're dead. Are you dead? <laughs> I know there's dead people listening right now, but you ain't dead. So follow those instructions. One, two, three, then make a list of all the time you felt like a weirdo and tell yourself, hey, you survived it. You have the ability to handle feeling different, which you're not different, but that's okay. We're going to let our mind have that story for a little bit. The more you practice embodiment, those of y'all out there doing trauma work and embodiment practice, did the physical therapist tell you that this was also going to awaken your intuition? <laughs> Are you doing yoga all the time? Did the yoga teacher tell you that yoga will get, in, get you in your body and when you get in your body, you're going to wake up one day as a freaking psychic? I don't remember seeing that on the contract at the health club. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Isn't it interesting? We need in our bodies because we need our intuition we need those psychic skills we need to hear our dead they're all around you they're begging you let me help you let me help you listen open your ears open your heart i'm here i'm telling you i have to tell them to knock it off sometimes it's like i don't know the people you want to send a message to you're gonna to have to get them to cross my path somehow there's so much want to tell you so many things. I'm not special at all. I'm just mouthy. That's the difference. I just know how many times I've been through painful things, and I've lived through them all. And I'm still here, so why not? What do you have to lose? I have nothing to lose. <laughs> I have no reputation. I have no social standing. I don't have, um, like, academic credentials anymore to stand on, which used to be my banky, my pacifier of letters after my name. I still have my degree letters because I worked hard for that shit, y'all. I'm first generation college. <laughs> college graduating. But, you know, state certificates and things like that used to mean everything to me. They made me feel like I belonged. They made me feel legitimate. Like, yeah, I know what I'm saying. Do you see all those fucking letters? Bitch. <laughs> I don't have those anymore. I had to get over it. And now, who cares? You hear dead people? So what? Everybody has that potential. You ain't special. That's what I tell myself. I'm not telling you you ain't special. But that's what I tell myself when I get to feeling weird about it. I have a book that's pouring out of me. I have to get over being worried about being weird. Like this is the last layer. Can you get any weirder than hearing dead people? I don't think so. I think this is the bottom of the weirdo barrel. You know, so I have to laugh about it. I can keep stuffing it in the closet, like I said, and then I can keep getting injured. And things can keep going wrong. And my life can continue to be difficult. But the more I say yes, the more money flows. The more I say yes, the more my heart opens. The more I say yes, life is easier. I'm waking up happy. 
and I have been for months. I had to close some energetic loops. I had to make some changes that felt good in my body. The more I pay attention to my body and how it feels as I make decisions, the easier things get, the more my intuition grows, the more those abilities open. Embodiment side effects 101. <laughs> you may become clairaudient. You may experience hearing dead people. You might know where your grandma left her earrings at the bottom of her couch. <laughs> you know, like they don't tell you that part. Practice embodiment, they said. It'll be great, they said. It'll take care of your PTSD, they said. What? Who's that talking in the corner? Grandpa Joe? <laughs> what the hell? Okay, so bottom line, your intuitive abilities are awakening, awakening, getting stronger, pushing you to get over yourself for a reason, because you need it for your survival and your thrival. <laughs> It's got to happen. It's got to happen. It's going to happen. So better just laugh. Just joke about it. Find other weirdos. You're not alone. All my clients say, I'm the only one. No, you ain't, because all my clients say that. There's a bunch of y'all saying nobody's like you. So let's form a group of the people who think nobody's like them. <laughs> okay, we have to poke fun at this. We have to recognize that it's not special. It's special, but it's not special. It's like, oh my gosh, what kind of, what could we compare it to? I don't know, but it's like as a species, these abilities have been, you know, shoved in the closet with the door shut for decades, thousands of years, hundreds of years for sure. But I think thousands of years. We can't, nature always self-corrects. As a species, we've been off track for a very, very, very long time. Nature always self-corrects. We are self-correcting. We are getting our ass back in our body and waking up. Waking up means, I hate the psychic word, I really do. And yet... That's the best encompassing word we've got right now. Maybe one day it'll just be your, you know, just so common. Like, we don't talk about smell. Hey, you know what? I hit 42 and all of a sudden I could smell better. Does that make me weird? Oh my God, y'all. I turned 50 and had to get glasses. Am I weird now? Is that weird? <laughs> Come on now. We don't say stuff like that. It's just normal change, right? Body goes through changes. Why wouldn't this be just a normal evolutionary nature correcting, getting us back on track so that we don't kill ourselves and the planet? Right? It's just normal. So laugh about it. Look at all the times you felt like a weirdo. Tell yourself the truth about this. Everybody's got these. You're special in that you're aware of it. You're fighting and struggling with it, but that means you're aware of it. That puts you 100 yards ahead from Dave down the corner who's making sure his grass is exactly five inches high, mowing his yard every Saturday so HOA Betty doesn't come a-knocking. You know what I mean? Like, be happy that you're in a pickle. Be happy that you are aware that you have some stuff going on and it's kind of weird. And your, your social self, your conditioned not self, part of you is freaking out. And that's okay. It's okay. You don't have to worry about it. You're a leader. You're aware of it. You're going through some shit. Start talking about it. You're on the leading edge. You will be a leader for the people behind you. As your life changes, they will notice. Just being around you 
your energy will give them a little bit of a don't shake the baby thing. It kind of grabs their aura and gives them a good shake. Now, what they do with it, you know, that's not your responsibility and you can't control it. So you can't think, well, I want my husband to wake up, so I'm just going to sit next to him all the time. Well, that's not going to (laughs) work. You need to let go of wanting your husband to be different. He is who he is, and that's all that he is. If he changes, he changes. That's his job, not yours. It's okay. If you're too scared to let people know today, that's fine. Tell yourself the truth. Oh. Oh. I guess I'm getting more in my body. Hmm. I guess I'm becoming a more whole human. Because I'm aware of all this stuff going on. I don't know what to do with it. But I'm aware of it. That's pretty cool. Or I remember that time I was 13 and I was the weird kid that got left out. Oh. I made it through. Made me a more compassionate person. It made me not scream about people being on welfare. Because you ain't paying for it. Look at all the good that came out of all the bad. Look at all the strength, all the courage that you have, even right now in this moment, feeling freaked out about your stuff. It's normal. It's okay. You're going to get through it. And you're going to love, love, of living in your body and waking up happy and taking a moment in the morning to say, Hallelujah, Jesus, I've still got a body. I can go make some good trouble. I can go create a ruckus because I'm still here and i got a physical body. I can still go do stuff. Yay me. It kind of broke my heart today To have two powerful women within such a short period of time tell me that they weren't doing their work in the world. Well, they are doing work in the world, but they're not doing their most profound work in the world because of this stuff, this fear. It kind of made me sad. And then I get mad again. (laughs) Again, that's another episode. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Go normalize this for yourself. Ask your intuit intuition. <laughs> Ask your abilities to make themselves known to you. If you feel comfortable hearing your team invisible, ask them to start talking to you. You're willing to listen. That's all it takes. You don't ever have to pull another oracle card ever. You can if you want to. They're fun. I love them. I have like a million decks. It's ridiculous. I love a good oracle card. But I also know where that's really coming from. Okay? So if you want to know, ask. If you want to hear more, ask. If you want to see more, be aware more, be more comfortable, ask for their help. They're all standing there ready to help. And if you get to feeling like it's too much for you, go find somebody that you can say that to. I've got these abilities awakening. I've got a witch wound. I'm scared of being burned at the stake. I remember a past life. I know my great, great, great grandmother had the second sight and was put to death. Whatever. Talk about it. Tell someone. Get some support. Stop thinking you're the only one. Ask for help. Recognize your normalcy, your normality, your absolute averageness. (laughs) okay that's all i'm gonna say (sighs) free human design group practical human design because none of this stuff is useful if it's not also practical practical human design for success on facebook you obviously know where the podcast is business things coming up there's a cosmic clarity night that I used to do in person i wish i could do it in person but it's going to be online that's posted on my instagram and my facebook you can come hang out for three hours and if you've got ancestors that have something to say to you and they can come through clearly you can ask whatever questions you want 
I'll channel some stuff for you. I've had people change their entire lives after a night like that. And guess what? It's only 75 bucks. And guess what? Half of that goes to support a women's community center that provides online stuff and local stuff in Greenville, South Carolina. Okay, all kinds of stuff coming up. Less hustle, more human design, business. If you're ready to stop procrastinating and get off your butt and do some stuff nicely with naps and snacks. That's coming up February 24th. All right, you know where the website is? Go look. Think less, feel more. Talk to you later.